UC Berkeley tests out their bipropellant engine. Sugar Shot to Space tries at it again. USC starts their process for going for the record. Astra gets out to the Space Tech Expo, and Danstar attempts to break the bipropellant record. This is your amateur rocketry news for the month of November. Let's start in the European rocketry community with a new group called Dan Star. They're a Danish student group that is a combination of many universities throughout Denmark, and they're coming together to try and build cool rocketry projects. One project that they're currently working on is an attempt to break the bipropellant liquid rocketry record. This record stands at 6.7 kilometers, and the Danstar team got out to the launch stand in order to try and break that this past month. Their rocket, called the Valkyrie, is what is going to be attempting to break this record. This is an interesting rocket that is powered by isopropyl alcohol and nitrous oxide. With this combination, they're able to get up to a thrust level of 3.1 kilonewtons using just a pressure-fed system. That's right, you heard correctly, this rocket is actually fueled by alcohol. But it seems like the students might have actually taken a little bit of the supply because the rocket was not quite able to make it to the 6.7 kilometer target. The launch all went according to plan, but unfortunately, the rocket stopped short at just a 6.5 kilometer apogee. This put them just 200 meters short of the record. We look forward to following their progress in the future. Next up are some developments that come out of the USC RPL team. They're the team that actually currently hold the amateur rocketry record at 103 kilometers, but they're looking to go even higher. Their target is to break the all-time amateur rocketry record of 117 kilometers set by the civilian exploration team. The rocket that went this far was called the Go Fast Rocket, and it's quite popular in the amateur community, but USC wants to get their names in the record books again. Their plan is to develop their next rocket called Dome Piercer. But before they can start working on that, they first need to work out the technology that they're putting into their next engine called Earth Shakier. And boy, did they make the Earth shake this past month. In their solid motor test, they experienced a catastrophic failure as the engine casing ruptured after only about a second of operation. This is common when attempting to push the boundaries of what these types of technologies can do. We hope that the US team can learn from this failure in order to continue developing cutting edge technology that will hopefully take them all the way to the record. Next up, let's talk about Astra. We were not able to do any exciting rocketry experiments this month, but we were able to get out to the Space Tech Expo Europe. There we were able to showcase our model and develop some key contacts that we're going to need in order to perform some of the testing we're going to do in the next year. There are lots of cool companies that we were able to connect with and learn about while we were at the Space Tech Expo. One of the key contacts that we met at the Space Tech Expo was the Gaia New Space Network. They're a group that's focused on space and space technology within the European community. Be sure to check out some of their links and their channel in the description below. We also met some contacts that are going to help us out with propulsion testing, pressure testing, and also, finally, the launch. If you worked with us at the fair, a big thank you, and we look forward to working with you in the future. There are also a lot of interesting companies that we were actually just introduced to while we were at the expo. There are many, many small sat launchers that are all looking to develop new rockets and new rocketry technology within the European community. The next couple years are going to be really exciting as we see many of these rockets taped to the launch pad in order to test out their technologies. Be sure to subscribe to our channel in order to stay up to date with some of those actions and some of these companies that are pushing the bounds of aerospace exploration. Next up, we have a team from UC Berkeley called Space Enterprise. They're also developing a liquid engine similar to Danstar. And actually, they have the same target, which is to break the amateur liquid propellant record of 6.7 kilometers. They're not quite at the stage where they're ready to launch, but they were actually in testing just this past month in November. Their rocket is a little bit different as it runs on propane and liquid oxygen, and it's called the light bulb engine, which may sound a little funny until you realize what their rocket name is called. Eureka 1. I guess they have a lot of big ideas. Space Enterprise was able to get up to the test stand with light bulb in order to test out their propane rocket. 
and the testing was relatively successful. They were able to get a full duration burn and some good data that they'll be able to use in order to continue developing the Eureka 1. We wish them well on their campaign to try and continue breaking records. Last on the list is a group called Sugar Shot to Space. They're a team that's been working for many, many years in order to try and develop a rocket which is purely powered on sugar. I bet you didn't think that something you can find in your kitchen cabinet could also power a rocket. Yes, science! But it turns out that when you put sugar and potassium nitrate together, it actually generates quite a powerful reaction. The Sugar Shot to Space team is trying to utilize this chemical reaction in order to power their vehicle all the way to the Kármán line. Over the past couple years, they've been experimenting with the formula in order to find what works for this particular type of engine. For this test, they built a 200 millimeter diameter motor with a total thrust of about nine kilonewtons. Unfortunately, this test didn't last much longer than a second as the entire casing experienced a catastrophic failure. This is most likely because of an imperfection in the grain material itself. Solid motors are very sensitive to the area that is exposed to the exhaust. And if there's a crack or a hole in the propellant grain, you can have a sudden increase in pressure, which can completely destroy your rocket. We hope that the Sugar Shot to Space team continues to develop this formula and process for how they make their solid rocket motors. Because I, for one, would love to see a rocket to the Carmen line powered entirely by candy. To infinity and beyond! As an honorable mention, the rocket company Astra, which we share a name with, was able to reach orbit. This makes them the fourth private company to achieve this illustrious title. They had a long development process in which they have blown up or failed on five separate attempts. But this was finally the one that did the trick. What's interesting about their rocket is that they're offering one of the cheapest rides to space that currently exists. With their rocket, they're able to deliver 25 to 150 kilograms all the way into a sun-synchronous orbit and they're able to do it for half the price of what the current competition is offering. We wish Astra all the best success in their future, and we hope that other small satellite launchers will continue in their footsteps. Be sure to like and subscribe in order to get all the updates related to amateur rocketry news. And remember to keep expanding your horizons.